Hello and welcome to the show. We are here today on B Menchi Drive. Going to be well driving some more vehicles till destruction. We start with something very, very silly. This is the Gambler 500 Piccolino. It is. We've got a bathtub on it because that's important. Uh, however, survivability might not be too bad for this vehicle because it's got kind of quite good ground clearance. My main concern with this is the front wheels. I don't... I mean, okay, so the engine is air-cooled, which is good. We don't really have a radiator to worry about. That takes one problem away. Uh, we could lose the oil pan, but the engine's very high up. I think it's unlikely that we're going to hit that. The big concern is, I guess... Uh, actually, I was going to say shaft, but no, of course not, because the engine's at the back, so drive shaft very, very short. It's steering. It's, it's the front wheels are very exposed. I mean, this is essentially an open-wheeled vehicle. If it flips, we could be in trouble with the wheels coming off. Oh, got to go fast enough. That's perfect, sort of. You want to go just fast enough to make that jump while still being able to land nicely. But yeah, wheels pinging off from awkward landings if the vehicle rolls over wheels just being snapped and bent. And of course the front end is nowhere near as strong as it should be. Uh, it kind of just looks like someone's put some scaffolding frame and a bathtub on the front. I think the bath's quite heavy as well, so if that stays on for any length of time that could actually make the damage on the front suspension worse. And we got around this first lap actually relatively nicely. I mean, big... I don't know whether the big sort of rear tyres are going to be good or not for us uh, in terms of keeping this thing alive. Uh, we, we're going to be a little bit more sensible over there. We don't have a huge amount of power. This thing isn't particularly fast. Uh, these kind of... Whoa! These kind of bumps aren't too bad for the Piccolina, although we are all out of shape. I oh, know. Don't, don't be doing that. I think weight distribution is all over the place with this. Funnily enough... Oh, God. What has gone on with the front? I've got concerns immediately with the front left, and now I've got concerns on the front right. Uh, I mean, the roof box rack... Is amazingly survived longer than I thought it was going to. We've still got the toolbox and like a tub of oil with us, which honestly I am surprised by. Uh, the front suspension I think has taken some form of damage. I mean, it's a leaf spring in the middle. It's a bit of a weird suspension layout. Uh, I suspect, I suspect it's going to be a case of it's going to work up until it just all snaps completely. I don't think there's really going to be a gradual breakage on that. I think it's just going to go all in one Ooh, at some point. That was nicely done. We've still got more than enough speed and control. I mean, that's the other important thing. This isn't the nicest vehicle in the world to drive. So the fact that I've still got control to put the vehicle where I want it to for these jumps and everything, that is very important. All right, just easily does it over the house jump. There we go. We are through the water again. We could do with a little bit more speed over there just to clear the sort of secondary bump. Whoa, that's fine. Uh, we have still got... I mean, we've still got more than more than enough steering. Christ, the front is really held on by <laughs> such a tiny... There's like a one bolt holding the entire front suspension together. That feels bad. That feel, I don't know how strong... I presume that particular sort of node is very, very strong in this... Oh, to make this vehicle actually feasible. Uh, I do think something might have broken in the suspension since the start. It feels like it's got a lot more travel than it should have. Oh, God. The real big scare for this vehicle, the big concern, is it tipping, sort of approaching these jumps. That's why I'm actually... I mean, we haven't got much speed anyway, so we're having to be a bit careful. But I am a very, very aware if this gets twisted on... Whoa, it just doesn't. doesn't keep all its wheels on the ground. If this gets twisted on a takeoff somewhere, it is going to lose all its wheels. I doubt they're going to be strong enough. Oh, that does... So, some... I'm not 100% sure what has gone in the front suspension. Something's gone wrong in the front suspension, which is why... Oh, God, you can actually see now it's gone worse. It's why I think we're tripoding through these corners, and we weren't initially. The front is just really loosely connected, so through heavy cornering, it just picks up the inside rear wheel. I was trying to test it through there, but <laughs> didn't get much luck. That being said, though, it is actually helping us in general... Uh, around here. We have a big slap wheelie for the, <laughs> for the It's actually kind of working for us in terms of survivability. Can we still go fast enough there? We can. Nicely done. Uh, we are unable to... We're certainly unable to get much speed up. Woo! Uh, and we are able to... We're still able to position the vehicle where we need it to 
B. We can slow. We can we can get up here. I mean, this is actually a very slow jump. I think of all the driven till destruction circuits I've ever done, that is the slowest big jump. You can't actually go too fast over there because that, that makes the landing really bad. So you've got to slow it down. Ooh, but got to aim very precisely. That bump there is horrible. I feel like the front wheels are clinging on to life at the moment. It's going to be one of these hits. It's just going to snap everything. But for for now, it is holding on pretty nicely. We all get, oh, that's a big jump. You can actually see how much that front axle is twisting on these landings. Although, if it is slightly broken, the twisting might actually help absorb some of the impact. There isn't much more left to damage other than the wheels, uh, or I guess that one bolt holding it all together. Uh, if that comes off, then I guess we're done for. But, uh, yeah, that sort of slight twisting around is not, oh, it's not the worst thing in the world, because it's, it's like... It's essentially like articulation on a rock crawler, weirdly, we've got going on at the front, which I probably couldn't do intentionally, but it is... It's protecting the vehicle, it's protecting the steering, which is so critical in this. As I said, that is my big fear with this. If the steering... Well, the steering is the weak link. We could lose a rear wheel if we flip it over, but... So far... So good. This is actually a very, very impressive run. This is not necessarily what I was expecting this to be a bit of a silly, light-hearted vehicle, but it is doing pretty good. I guess the Gambler cars are desi well, they were designed for a little bit of kind of abuse, but the, the Gambler Grand Marshal wasn't very good for this particular course. This, however, has got the ground clearance to keep the oil pan fine. Oh, control is starting to take a little bit of a hit now, but it's all fine. Well... We're through that section, all fine. We're heading up towards the house jump once again. Get the vehicle under control. Whoop, lands on the nose a little bit heavily. Uh, eventually, that is probably going to be what kills it. One of these landings on the nose. All it's going to take, it's so close to being broken, all it's going to take is one little... Oh, okay, no, that's fine. I mean, it, it, <laughs> the front twisted in weird ways, but it's fine. All it's going to take is one slightly bigger hit than, than it's been dealing with and that'll be the end of it. The front right looked a little bit questionable on that landing, but still the Gambler Piccolina continues to run around the course. Uh, this section, oh, is always an interesting one. Snap the front end down there, but again it's still it's it's dealing with all the hits and amazingly the toolbox is still in the roof. That is quite impressive. Oy, over the bumps we go. Uh, it does not like the bumps leading up to that, I don't even know what's called that weird jump section, but uh, it really, really doesn't like those bumps. It gets chucked about all over the place. Uh, I'm guessing that's probably not helped by the fact we've got essentially no front suspension and then quite bouncy rear suspension. I mean, we've got big bouncy, I was going to say tractor tyres, they're not quite, I guess, truck tyres at the rear. Um, and it's, yeah, twanging about. And, cause, yeah, we've got nothing at the front really. I've got minimal at the front, absorbing the impact uh, through there. Whoop. And over the jump we go. Still, <laughs> we march on. See, because we've, we've got leaf spring in the middle, and then we've got the shocks either side. And I think some of it might be giving up at the front, because uh, it does certainly doesn't hold itself in place properly anymore. Whoa. But, yeah, again, the, <laughs> the fact that the front end is so free to move around is really keeping it alive. This is a very, very, oh god, impressive run, although I'm not well set up for that jump. Uh, handling issues starting to creep in a little bit as we head around for another. I mean, it'd be astonishing if this somehow made its way ooh, to the top of the leaderboard. I don't I don't think it's quite got the longevity of the, what is it that's at the top? I have forgot, oh, the errata uh, 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 or whatever. I don't think we've quite got the longevity of that here. I fe <laughs> it just feels like it's one big hit away from just complete failure. I mean, it felt like that from the start, to be fair. Oh. It's definitely, the front end is definitely compressing a lot more now than it was before. Oh, that bump there has has done nasty things to us. I mean, it looks okay. I definitely think it's sitting lower on the on the front end. Now, through that little gap. Whoa! Oh, that's, that's the sort of hit that I don't want to do. It's twisted the rear wheel. In fact, actually, that kind of, it sort of helped. It's twisted the back slightly. Oh no, don't want to do that either. Like we can we can survive that. We can just drop down that little gap. Piccolina is fine. Oh, not very powerful. Okay, yeah, the, the rear is now starting to be twisted as well. This is gonna make life more difficult. <laughs> now we've got problems. Now we have got some real awkward problems going on. 
uh, it's not going to want to drive straight anymore. It's not going to line up nicely for the jumps anymore. The front is more twisted than it has been. Uh, we've got quite a lot of negative camber going on both sides. It's still mostly in a straight line. That's good. How do we fly through the air? Okay, still well enough to complete that section. This next one is a big, let's say it's a big test through the sort of cold chicane. I can't think of a better name for that one. Uh, you are always more than welcome to suggest names for some of these sections on the circuit. Uh, oh, find the pipe. There we go. All is fine. Uh, yeah, things are definitely twisted at the rear. The rear left is kind of pushed in. I don't know what can never decide whether it's the sort of axle suspension that's damaged or whether it's the body. I think it is suspension damage rather than the body uh, being twisted. I'm not sure what rear suspension this use. It looks as it looks more like the trophy truck suspension. I mean, a lot less heavy duty than that. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, it bounces all over the place on these landings. Uh, front end is is starting to really go at a funny angle. I fear now with these steering and handling issues, we're, we're not going to be able to hit these jumps in the nice controlled manner that has kept this thing alive for as long as it has been. Uh, it's starting to ping around. There's a lot of camber now on the front. Uh, right. Through the middle we go. Oh. Once again, though, I think that articulation is so There's a lot of camber on both sides. Uh, still got steering. I mean, if the wheels get too cambered, then they just kind of stop touching the ground. We've seen some vehicles have that issue in the past. God, does not like that jump anymore. Going to have to slow it down a bit more. We've still got steering. Yeah. Uh, we're So far, <laughs> we've bailed. It's a very dangerous place, actually, to bail. Especially with an open-wheeled vehicle, it'd be very easy to catch the wheel on that concrete barrier and just tear it off. Uh, so, yeah, we are losing suspension. I mean, if you look, you can see when we look back how broken the front wheels are, how spayed out the front wheels are. Actually, I think we only really need second gear for this. Uh, that is, it's still taking that jump nicely. Uh-oh. It's not taking that jump very nicely. It's, not, <laughs> it's barely a jump most of the time. Come on. Into the landing zone we go. Temperature being, well, I mean, kept down. It's air-cooled engine, and we are often going through quite a lot of water, so it's actually being cooled quite nicely uh, towards the house again we head. As I said, a remarkable performance from this vehicle. We are able to complete the jump through the water we head out the other side, and still, that bump there, it's hit that a lot of times. I think it's hitting the frame. I think it's, it's able to... <laughs> hey, hello. That was a curious tripod and a half. Yeah, it's able to hit the frame, but not in a way that's breaking anything important. Maybe that's what's launching it into the air? Uh-oh. Oh, no, oh. oh, well, we knew it was going to happen eventually. We have lost the front right wheel. Oh, okay. Now, do we still have... That wheel is still steering. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. The steering's gone. I thought it was steering. In fact, you can actually see the tie rod where it is snapped. There is no steering. It's spinning around in a circle. Look at it go. <laughs> it's taken all the steering out in one go. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. It was kind of inevitable that uh, there it is. That's the end of the steering. I thought for a second it had steering because the wheel was facing the way I wanted it to. But that was just a coincidence. It is gone. Um, that survived so long. That was actually a remarkable run. It was always going to break at some at some point, really. Uh, I mean, the toolbox made it all the way as well, which is, yeah, very, very good going. Um, remarkable, remarkable performance. The suspension really held together uh, for that one. But eventually, just the repeated, the repeated jumps, the repeated smacking on the floor would be enough to snap the, snap the steering. It was what I thought would go, and sure enough, that is the cause of death for the Gambler Piccolina. Up next, we have got the CCF. This is, well, essentially a Mazda MX-5 style vehicle. Now, I've got a fairly well, 210 uh, manual spec, so it's a fairly base spec MX-5. And of course, it's a sports car. At the end of the day, this is not a vehicle that you would expect to be particularly good at this sort of course. It's going to have far too low ground clearance, far too stiff a suspension, and all of that. But we shall see, because sometimes, if the oil pan can survive, sometimes the sports cars can actually do quite well here, because while the suspension is generally stiff and they get chucked about a lot, it's normally quite strong at least. So, 
we shall see how it all all pans out, really. Also, you'll notice I was turning off the uh, any of the assists. Um, if the vehicles come with that sort of stuff, they always get turned off. Uh, sometimes things like traction control and stability control can get very, very funky when you are driving around a heavily damaged car, especially if you've got wheels pointing in ways wheels shouldn't be and all of that good stuff. Uh, that was a bad jump over the house. We kind of clonked the front wheel on the pipe, but... We were thankfully going slow enough, God, there's no traction on the dirt, the car has absolutely none. Uh, I mean, it's front engine rear wheel drive, so we have got the drive shaft as a potential point of failure. I mean, my main, my real concern is the, is the oil pan, I don't know how tough that is on this car, uh, or oil pan or radiator, any of those uh, could, could be an issue. We will oh, jump up onto the little concrete. Uh, platform bit. I mean, it feels fast. There's a bunch of specs. This is a very, very cool mod. We may well see some of the other specs go at some point in the future. Um, hell, when my computer's... When I've got a new computer, we may well see an MX-5 Cup-style race, because there are a couple of Cup cars uh, in for, you know, for multiplayer and, and the like. Oh, we are getting shaken about all the way through there. We're going to twang it over some more bumps. That's fine. Easy does it. Up this set of Easy does it up that section. I just can't go near the throttle because the car wants to spin. Uh, we like that. It's very, very easy to spin and it's very bouncy as well. That, so that is one of the other things with the stiff suspension. It might be quite strong in terms of sort of structural integrity, uh, but it can bounce the cars. Too soft a suspension and you get bounced around in a different way. Too stiff a suspension and when you get this, kind of the clonking around. Uh, all right, over the jump we go. Oh, that's... That's not ideal. We are eating the front bumper. Now, can I pull... So I'm allowed to pull debris out of the way. I'm not 100% sure if I pull that, if that's actually going to help or hinder us. Because I think it might just take out the wheels on its way oh, off the car. We will continue on regardless. I don't think... don't think it's worth the risk of trying to pull that out at the moment. It's not really hindering us driving around here could do with it falling off the car god that section there is such a problem for a car like this we've actually got away with that surprising well and it pinged the bumper free so the issue with the with the the jump for a car like this heading towards the house is there's sort of bumps leading up to that jump which just upset the car they just in this case they just throw the car about so i can't aim the car where i want it to because we're being bounced around all right up we go that's nicely enough done for the Mazda alike. Although, when it's on to its second lap here, for a road car and for a car that shouldn't be good at this, actually doing pretty well. Don't speak too soon. You know what the curse of the commentator is like, but... Uh, oi! <laughs> it's, I mean, that's, that's, you, get, you get quite a big amount of airtime up there. You've got to go fast enough you don't get beached, but you really don't want to just launch it at the scenery. Uh, we can jump through that section. How is all the suspension holding up? I mean, it feels all right. It doesn't feel bad to drive at all. It seems to go in a straight line. Uh, we will head over that bump, no problem. Oh, that's a clonk and a half on the front end. It's still it's just like, like shaking from side to side. You can't put any power down uh, because it is all over the place. Oh, that's a surprisingly big jump. Come on. There we go. It'll bolt forward. Yeah, trying to put power down in a some sort of controlled manner with this vehicle is not easy. I mean, we're fine over the speed bumps down here. Uh oh. Nope, I'm not going to go for a roll off of that. Don't think we would have actually rolled off of that, to be fair. Uh, <laughs> we got a little bit carried away with the old speed there, but it's fine. We are over the container jump. That might have been a little bit far. It's not, that section's not too bad. If you do land a bit too, if you go a bit too fast, you land nose down in the water, and that does seem to cushion the impacts a little bit. Same can be said up here. Uh, see, the downside with this one here is you want to go a little bit... Whoa, still struggling with the bouncing. You want to go a little bit faster to try and get a nicer line over the... Oh, that pipe is so dangerous. Hold it, where are we going? Mazda, where have we gone? <laughs> just bounced. It's just visiting some scenery. We're visiting new parts of the course. It's very difficult to drive when the rear end has got a complete mind of its own. It does seem... So I'm, I'm, you'll notice me taking that at a bit of a diagonal. That's trying to protect the radiator and the oil pan. Uh, if we can, uh, if, if at all possible, we try and keep those alive for as long as, as long as, oh, <laughs> we're on two wheels across that container. Uh, yes, yeah, we'll try and protect the oil pan and the radio. We know how, how quick the death comes from those. Uh, so some of these approaches we are trying to, oh, 
god, get a little bit nicer. I mean, there's a lot of sh a lot of shock going through the chassis of this car. The suspension does not really soften the blow very much. Oh. As you could see there, by how much it just pings back into the air. This would be one of the most uncomfortable rides around here, I would imagine, uh, that we have seen seen so far. I mean, I can't imagine the Piccolina was amazingly comfortable, but uh, this would be sort of spine-shattering, like that, for example. Uh, there's just barely any give in this car. It's a sports car, that is, you know, <laughs> kind of the point. That being said, it is remarkably strong. It has done remarkably well to have survived this long around this course. I mean, it still vaguely looks like the car it was supposed to at the start. Oh, that kicker really flicked the back end into the air. Uh, okay, the radiator is clinging on to life barely on the front. That's to be expected, really, I should think. Uh, oh, yeah, a lot of these jumps are sort of... They just kick the back of the car into the air. Probably not helped by this car's suspension, because uh, just, there's just nothing to absorb any, any sort of forces. It just gets flicked about. Uh, we are gee, just about set up. There is some issues with the handling now. Oh, that's a little bit too fast. Still, though, it's it's taking these hits a lot better than a lot of cars do around here. We can clonk our way down this section. Uh, right, approach at a little bit of an angle. Try and minimise any damage. I mean, how that radiator is clinging on to life, I do not know. Uh-oh. Oh, Ooh. so takeoffs like that, one of the big concerns you have is landing on an individual wheel. You put a lot of weight on one side of the vehicle. It's kind of what killed the Piccolina in the end. Oh, well, that's a new one. Uh, amazed the radiator is still clinging on. It's probably being held on by a couple of the pipes, and that's about it. Uh, I surely can't live for too long. Or oh, one of these wheels is going to come off, because that feels pretty bad. Uh, now, I think we are beached. Okay, now we are allowed to node grabber a vehicle like this. I'm going to just try and not do any further damage. I didn't want to pull from the front because there's so much loose on the front that uh, I didn't want to go and, uh, yeah, do do more damage. So, yeah, if the car gets beached, we are allowed to do that. Otherwise, you know, a lot of supercars, a lot of supercars and, and sports cars like this, for example, would just struggle to make it around here. Uh, however, if it's continually being beached, if there's clearly a bent chassis going on, that's a different story, but that's not the case here. Uh, we just had a bad approach because the car was bouncing around and it got stuck. So, oh, God, that's a slam and a half. That is one hell of a roll. That's not expected. Uh, we have gone over. Still... The radiator is fine. The wheels are okay. The bumpers are flapping. Bits are, are kind of dangling off the car. But the little Mazda it will continue onwards. Or Ma Mazda alike. I should say, that's a very, very cool mod, this one. Uh, oh, God. Really not designed for this. I, <laughs> you, know, you kind of feel a little bit sorry for the poor sports car. Whoa. It's definitely got erratic handling now. Uh, we will clonk over there, try and not... God, it really wants to go nose first down these jumps. Uh, the concern is... Well, the concern is really the radiator, although some of the ways this thing twists, I'm worried it's going to just, again, land on a single wheel and snap said wheel. Still managing to land, I think, mostly on the frame at the front. Hopefully not the radiator. The little, the little CCF is bloody strong, I will give it that. Uh, we are towards the house jump once again. Now, we know that section there messes the car up. Yep, it does. Ooh. That's a big hit on the rear wheel. Has it bent it? Is the rear wheel... No, the we rear wheel is still... God, the wheel the wheel hubs are incredibly tough on this car. That's remarkable. Uh, I was expecting that to at least bend the rear left. I don't. It's definitely not right, but it's a lot better than it was. Oh, we're going to go over again. Uh, we have got to the portion of the uh, of the video where the uh, <laughs> where the sports car, with absolutely no give in the suspension and it's starting to break a bit, just likes to fall over a lot. We have seen this before uh, from sports cars. Uh, we God, it's so difficult to drive. <laughs> it just, just doesn't want to stay on the ground at all like that. For example, geez, just chucks the car straight back up into the air. I mean, the front. The whole front frame is messed up. It's been bent up in such a way that it's kind of... Oh, God, it's kind of protecting the radiator. I cannot get any speed out of this car. It's really wanting to kill the rear left wheel. 
And if we lose the wheel, we will stop working, I would expect. I doubt this will be a one, able to be a one-wheel drive. Oh, we're going to fall over again. And land on the wheels. All is fine. I don't know what the record is for most rolls in a driven till destruction. Probably done by a pigeon. This is trying to get that record. It would seem that's another big clonk, big clonk. Into the water we go and power out the other side. Uh, <laughs> but we are, we are doing a good number of laps for a road car. This is the sort of thing that you just don't expect to survive. I was honestly expecting this to maybe get a couple of laps. That was... You know, a couple of laps is doable for most cars, even if the radiator goes early on or the oil pan goes early on. You can try and get a couple of laps out of them. Wasn't expecting the Mazda alike to do this well. Clear the giant hazard. Actually, that's probably one of the best landings we've had down there. We got it perfectly in the landing zone without bouncing it around. Now we get chucked from side to side. What is, what is it going to take to kill this vehicle? Whoop. I'm honestly leaning more towards a rear wheel coming off uh, over one of these jumps if we get one of these impacts a little too ooh, bad like that. When that was impact detected, still did not kill the radiator. Amazingly, it's still going. That was once again really dangerous going up to that house jump. I mean, this has had some of the heaviest impacts actually on that landing because it's hit the pipe a couple of times now. That's a very big wheelie. Still doing still doing wheelies with this. We should, uh oh. Oh no. We've got so little control as soon as we start. It's definitely getting worse on the bumps. You just hit them and there is nothing that you can do because the car's bouncing around. You are at the mercy of the environment. Well, the terrain almost uh, as you're heading towards some of these jumps because you just never know what the car's going to be doing at any given moment. That time we're going to that time we're going to be actually quite nicely over there but then the landing's horrible afterwards it's, it's yeah it's still going is the remarkable thing here oh don't want to go this way guess we are uh, can I turn you around there we can it's still most of the wheels point straight it's still mostly going in a straight line uh, what is I mean, I, I say I think I think I'm still leaning towards thinking that it's going to be a rear wheel failure that sees this car dead. It is now stuck on its side, and clonk, back down we go. I mean, could the little two seat sports car really go and challenge an off road UTV for for distance? I mean, it's got a little while to go. But a bit like the Gambler 500 Piccolina, this is also not at all what was expected from a car like this. Whoop. God, there's no good way of getting that landing. You go slowly and it just kicks the back in the air and bounces around. You go quickly, you get a slightly better landing, but then you bounce around in a different way. There's just always bouncing involved with <laughs> this car. But we are over the, over the water jump there. Oh, we're still getting chucked about something horribly. Please go in the direction that I want you to. There we go. Well, just about there we go. This jump, this jump might be what kills it because as we, it's this bouncing around here that you just don't know. Sometimes like that, you just lined up perfectly. The next time you can be lined up perfectly on approach, and then the bounce chuck you a direction you're not expecting, and off to visit scenery you had. Uh, we are through the next section relatively well, even if I am struggling with the car. Once again, wanting to make up its own its own thing. It landed quite heavily on the front right that time, which looked bad, but it's still I mean, it's still clinging on to life. Uh, that jump there was almost lovely, just didn't quite get far enough. Oh, oh over that section we had. That's a... Uh, see, that is a big clonk. That radiator is so close to coming off the car. It is somehow clinging on to life. How how on earth? It is literally we are literally hitting the radiator on the floor every jump we land on the nose. I mean the I think that silver bar is supposed to go across the front. It's kind of what the bumper would connect to. It's been pushed up. The radiator is kind of behind it's not really behind it anymore. So I don't quite know how. Oh Well, that's another roll for the Mazda. Uh, can we get you back. Actually, you're going to be a bit of an awkward one. Yeah, because as I said, if I rolled you over the way I wanted it to, there we go. You're back on your wheels again. Another impact detected. Ooh, 
we have got we got issues on the front left maybe I mean you know <laughs> there are obviously issues uh, with the car here um, possibly there is now more damage on that front it's really difficult to tell I mean it didn't have much suspension travel to begin with so Oh god, don't lose the back end going up there. That would be an unfortunate way. Just a silly spin out and hit a curb to pluck a wheel off compared to everything. Oh, that's a huge jump from the car. It's still oh, it's gonna actually roll back onto its wheels. Good stuff. And climb. There we go. Up the oh, that might be a little bit too fast. Still. That's a big hit on the back of the car. Uh, actually, is that the fuel tank? I mean, it makes sense. Oh, the fuel uh, can't really look while driving. We were, I wasn't paying attention, but I can kind of see a bit like the great. Is it a bit like the Grand Marshal's fuel tank? I don't know. Maybe just that must be the exhaust. Actually, I was say we're about to have a worry about the fuel tank going. But if that is just the exhaust, like the big back box. Oh, we've lost a tire. Uh, oh, over we go, and still rolling. What tire was it? Front left. Okay, front tire is probably better to have. Mm, Maybe better to have lost a front than a rear here. Um, it, we lose a little bit of control, but I think on a rear-wheel drive car, the rear tyre would have been more important. We're not going very fast here, so the steering implications aren't great. I've driven cars around here with a lot worse steering than being impacted by a ruined tyre. Uh, it's, it's definitely starting to now look a lot worse. It's a lot more second-hand, this car. <laughs> and I'm talking into... It's been, it's been wrecked for a while, but I'm talking in terms of suspension damage. God, I can't I can't approach any speed. We just kind of have to let the car bounce its way over these jumps because you try and put any power down and it just gets thrown everywhere. Oh, that's going to clonk the rear. Quite hard, rear left. Yeah, okay, we have definitely... it's. Oh, this lap has got a lot worse, handling-wise. Uh, I think suspension outside of the tyre going, I think some of the... Ooh! That is a horrible hit on the rear wheel. It's still okay. Ama how on earth? How on earth did that rear wheel survive? That, that was an awful impact. That has snapped the wheel off many cars. That would have done a huge amount of damage to just about everything that's got around it. It is not right. The, the rear right wheel is very, very iffy in terms of angle, I think, now. Actually, it's not as iffy. Uh, it is definitely not correct. And my handling has gone... Yeah. It's starting to really hurt now, this car. But the fact that it's got this far is astonishing. <laughs> it just doesn't want to give up. What it turns out, for a destruction circuit, what you need is not big off-road vehicles, heavy-duty vehicles. No. You just need a two-seat sports car with the world's stiffest suspension uh, and the world's strongest radiator Blech. and a slight mind of its own. It, it does have that. What are we going to do here for this jump? Uh-oh. Uh, head towards the water. That has killed probably my steering. I just saw the front left is spinning around and the front left is at a funny angle. I think that might well be the death of the car unless we can. Now, if we can unhook the wheel, we are able to carry on. So yeah, we have got so we've just it was, the wheel was stuck in on itself. It's spinning around. We have got uh, we've got some steering but it's very minimal. Uh, it's just if the wheel gets caught up. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> I've got to get it back on the course to carry on. I fear Oh, we, well, I guess we can spin around on the spot now. Nah, I'm going to have to call it. We tried. We gave it as best chance possible to unhook the wheel, but, uh, yeah, that was... It was bouncing around on the approach to the house jump, and it was eventually let go, the front left let go. But that all being said, what a remarkable run. What a fantastically crazy run for <laughs> a two-seat sports car. And I believe it will be a new leader. Now, I have to check because the distance indicator is not always accurate. Um, but that is not what I ever expected to see around this around this course. I mean, the car's a wreck, but honestly, I've seen a lot worse. I've seen a lot worse die a lot quicker around here. A truly remarkable performance.
So, on to our leaderboard, and the CCF could not quite do it. It got close, though. It got mighty close. In fact, it was only about two corners behind the Orata. Uh, while the distance technically higher, uh, it didn't actually go further. Uh, the distance counts wheel rotations, and the car spins the wheels a lot, and all of that sort of thing. It can, it can skew it, which that car would have done around this course. Um, yeah, it got very, very close indeed. And, I mean, that's a mighty performance for a car that is incredibly unsuited to this. And I mean, likewise, it's an also very impressive performance from the Gambler 500 Piccolina. That'll go into third place. Uh, it goes ahead of the truck of the I-Series, far better than the Grand Marshal as well. I mean, they're, they're two cars that were massive surprises. I mean, the Piccolina's a little bit of a joke car. Sure, thought it'd be funny. Actually turned out to be very good survival in the sports car. You just don't expect to last very long around the course. But... That is the joy of Driven Till Destruction. Sometimes you get some really unusual results, and that has basically been the theme for today. But uh, there we go. That is going to be it for this video. I shall, of course, link all the mods used in the description if you want to download them and have a go with them yourself. But that is going to be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a uh, goodbye.